England in the Euros. Do you see that purple will reign or will it be purple pain <laughs> uh, for England? Will they be the princes of, of, for breakfast of <laughs> Europe? <laughs> What's up with you? I've been thinking about this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I, I think it's going to be... I, I love the squad. I think the squad's brilliant. I think it's packed full of talent. I just... I've always had this thing where I just wonder whether Gareth can get the best out of the players in a, in a formation that suits them. Can he be brave enough in games to make big changes and go after games a little bit, not be as pragmatic? Um, but this is as, as good a chance as we've ever had because of the quality that we've got. And you, you think of the World Cup, Bellingham's a better player now. So he's got more experience. He's got that big club mentality. I think that's a, a big thing as, uh, for, for England. But then you look at all the other players and they've all developed, they've got better. Um, the more caps they've got, the more that they've played with the clubs as well. But it, it still comes down to the management for me. Yeah. I think purple rain. Yeah. Why not? Are I you think, going for it? Yeah, I, I just, I agree with you. I think, obviously, you look at the squad for these two friendlies. I don't think that's representative of what it's going to be no. in the Euros because we, we've got a lot of injuries. I think something like 12 players in it that could potentially get into that final squad because of, of injuries and stuff at the moment. So I think this is an opportunity for maybe some of those younger players to, to show exactly what they can do or maybe players that haven't got as, as many caps in these friendlies. But this is like two tough games, isn't it? Going into it to see how England fair but yeah I think when you look at the players that are available the competition for places you could probably pick maybe eight of the positions would you say yeah. there's still a few positions where you go okay there's certainly room not room for improvement but who are you going to select in those positions is going to be competition yeah. before he actually selects that first 11 but you've got probably eight key players in yeah. that side that you know, are absolute top quality performers. But I would think, Sue, that this squad announcement certainly got the Sue Smith seal of approval, did it? Anthony <laughs> Gordon was in there, but Jared Branthwaite as well. Yeah, are you happy now? Yeah, he, he's been brilliant for Everton. And, you know, I've, I've been saying it, haven't I, from, from the start of the season, like, try and keep him quiet because... I think all Evertonians have watched him and, and watched the, the quality that he's got and, and the fact that, you know, he, he can still improve. That's that's the scary thing. He's still young. But the fact that he's he's left-footed, I think that helps a, 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 a centre-back pairing. Um, but he's he's quick. He's strong. He's good in the air. So he's got all of those physical attributes. Yeah. He's also very good on the ball. He reads the game really well. He's a good 1v1 defender. So I think when you're looking at a defender that is very good at this moment in time but can also get better and can also learn because I think it was after the Manchester City game where he, he slipped and Haaland got past him yeah. and straight away he was like I've learned from that I can improve on that so he's he's willing to learn and willing to get better so he must be a you know treat for a, a manager and a coach to work with. I think the big thing from his point of view is now is there is a position to take there. Yeah. I think Harry Maguire in and out the Manchester United team form up and down You've got to go in and think, I can get that space, and he is good enough to get that. Yeah. He, the, you've got to make an impression both in training and in the, in, the, in the games, given the opportunity. I hope he gets the opportunity. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. I think he's comfortable on the ball. He's got good pace. I think he learns, like Sue says, very quickly from mistakes. And I think... Sorry, Sue. We're, we're playing around better players in front of him <laughs> who will find better positions on the pitch and more confidence in the team. His passing will look even better and he'll drive out and he'll be able yeah. to pick passes. I think you'll see a completely different player. Uh, again, I think he'll move on from Everton because I think it's a natural progression for him to go beyond that. And I think the, this England bit could be the kickstart of that. He's a, he's a brilliant, he's superb. Yeah. Would, it, would it help him to have his club goalkeeper behind him at international level as well? Does, is that a help? Yeah, it is because you're, you're understanding the messages that come from there. But if you're playing alongside John Stones, for, for instance, how much are you going to learn from John Stones? Yeah. And John Stones is a brilliant talker. I've been lucky, lucky enough to be in, in when we had the uh, behind closed doors games, be there and listen to the players vocally, how they speak. He's a fantastic talker, communicator on the pitch. I think you can see it even now. He's growing, he's maturing. Playing alongside people like that. He's very lucky at Everton because Tarkovsky's Tarkovsky, like yeah. that. Superb. But you want to learn different things from different people. And the big thing with, with Branthwaite and, and uh, John Stones is I see very similar traits in both of them. 
the way that they play, the ability. Bram Thwaites probably a li little bit taller and a little bit more, uh, maybe it's not, not athletic as John Stones, but probably a little bit slower to turn, things like that. But he's quick on yeah, when he gets goes, going. Yeah. Um, but again, that partnership could be, mm. could be brilliant. Talking of being quick when he gets going, Anthony Gordon included. Uh, <laughs> did you a supporter of that yeah. decision? 100%. Wanted him in a while ago, thought he was a... a uh, had a great first half of the season. I was just hoping that the second half of the season wouldn't have a, a detrimental effect the way Newcastle have performed on his own individual performances. I think he's still being the, the star performer from them. I know he picked up that injury against Chelsea. I just hope he's fully fit uh, from that injury and that he's OK because he's outstanding. And, and the big thing is, is that Newcastle bought him from Everton with potential. Yeah. Now he's starting to fulfil that potential. And the potential's the end ball, the end decision-making, the final pass, that's starting to come together now under Eddie Howe. And again, he's, he's playing with, with what he will feel is better players. Um, and that's just off league position alone. That shows you that they are a better team, and he's starting to he's starting to show that potential. That's the biggest thing. I think it's the improvement of, of the end product. Isn't yeah. it? Because I think at Everton you saw his pace, his athleticism, his you know willingness to get into positions. But at times it was that final delivery, wasn't it? Or he'd get through on goal and maybe miss that opportunity. But that certainly improved, I yeah. think, under Eddie Howe. But uh, you've got that intensity, haven't you? Off the ball, where he's going to go press and, and win it back. 100%. But now you've got that quality on yeah. the ball too. I think the other side as well is he grew up as a player. He, he cut the, the simulation out of his game, yeah. which helped him because I think he's grown up as a player and understood it's actually it's detrimental to him, the way referees will look at him, the way people will view him as a player as well. He stays on his feet a lot more now and, he, and he's, he's so much better for it. Yeah, uh, Jordan Henderson included, no Calvin Phillips in the squad. So how difficult is it going to be for players to, to get back in now? I think it is, you know, you've got to feel for Calvin Phillips. I think we all know what a great footballer he is. We, we saw it for England. We saw it for, for Leeds. He's gone to Manchester City. It's, it's not quite worked out. I think we all said he needs to go somewhere and play. He's, he's gone to West Ham and he's, he's, he's not been at the levels that you have to be at to, to be selected. And I think I was quite interested to, to hear Gareth Southgate's squad because I wondered, would loyalty sort of continue continue yeah and Calvin Phillips maybe get into the squad so I think it was the right decision for him not to be in the team he'll just want game time at West Ham and, and perform at a level for them so that he you know he, he can try and get into it but I think it's I think it's going to be tough now to, to try and get into the side because he's not been playing at that level for a long period of time some doubts over the fitness of Harry Kane picked up an ankle injury <clears throat> for Bayern Munich this weekend. Uh, in this squad, there's the likes of Ivan Tony and Ollie Watkins. So, for you, Stephen, if Kane isn't fit, and uh, the whole of England will be hoping he is for the finals, but if he isn't, uh, due to another injury, who is England's number two, number nine? Yeah, I, I, I think it's Ollie Watkins. I think it has to be because of what he's done this season and how he's played, how he's improved under Unai Emery. I don't think... We, we often look at Ollie Watkins and we say, oh, he just plays on the shoulder. He's so much more than that now because of the improvement under Unai Emery and the way he plays. He can link up play. I think if you've got Jude Bellingham in the 10, he can then come short and Bellingham can run in behind. Um, I think it does depend on who you're playing against. I think Ivan Tony's a fantastic, not just a target man, but he will get your goals as well. And again, with the, with the movement in and around him, better players, will that help him? Will that improve? I think, ideally, we'd love to see both of them play a full 90 minutes in, in both games, one, one game each, and see how they both fare and see what the relationships are like. However, you just feel like these squads or the, the, the games are going to be a lot of tinkering and working things out. You just wonder if, 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 you, have, if you do lose Harry Kane within the tournament. Harry Kane's starting. Yeah. If he's fit, he starts. But say if he does pick an injury up or something happens, he's not quite at it. You might need to change that forward line. Well, what's your options now? Who works better? Who's got a better rapport between each other? There's not enough space in the squad to take both, is there? I'd always take strikers. 
I'd always take strikers because you've got to change games. Defenders won't change a game. They, they might be able to keep you in a game and keep you a clean sheet to, to see a game out. But if you're chasing a game, you don't bring defenders on. You bring attackers on. I'd rather have more options. And again, we talk again about this word confidence. If you've got people in the squad and maybe they're going through a little bit of a barren spell, but you've got someone itching to get on and you've got two or three of them, well, I want to put them on the pitch. I want to, I want to let them go. Um, they do have a lot of options in, in forward areas, but I'd rather be top heavy, top heavy in forward areas. Yeah, and I think it helps as well if they're like versatile, doesn't it? You know, yeah. so that the fact that they can maybe play in a nine, a ten, they can play out wide, that also helps. So it's not just you're literally taking three number nines. It could be that the number nine can play out wide, can play in a different position. So the other one I was going to mention, I think is really unlucky, is Solanke. I think he's having the season of his life, isn't he? Yeah. And I totally agree. I think it's it's Harry Kane starts. I think Ollie Watkins second, and then I, I feel it's between Ivan Tony and Solanke. So it's it's probably disappointing for him because he's probably thinking, what, what more I can I do to, yeah. to get into this side? But maybe Ivan Tony provides something a little bit different. 